Hello students, welcome to Narak PU Palace Online Classes. So we are discussing about competitive of field work elements. So in the last video, uh, we have completed uh, 16th group and uh, remains 16, 17, 18 group competitive from volume 5, page number 21, up to 40 questions we have completed in the last video. Clear? So now, 41 question number 41. Okay. See the question. In a solid argon, the atoms are held together by atoms of argon means held together by. Oh, I already mentioned here. 18th group elements are held together by weak van der Waal forces or can also be called as dispersion forces. Clear? So that's why what should be your answer here? Option 3 is the correct one. Part 1, option 3 is correct. Next one. Part 2. So the structure of XEF6 is clear? So what they are asking here? XEF6. To know the structure, you must know how many bond pairs are there and how many loan pairs are there. Clear? So I already mentioned how to do this one simply. And J1, J1 belongs to which group? My eighth group. Means when you are calculating here non pairs and bond pairs, and don't consider their 18th group like just you remove means you don't consider the D block elements, then 18th group is come, it is a eighth group. Clear? So that's why J1 is belongs to eighth group. So that's why how many electrons you have to write here? Eight electrons right here, eight electrons here. Clear? These are eight electrons. One, two, three, four, four, two are eight. Clear? So J0 is forming how many bonds here? Six bonds with the fluorine. Six bonds means J0 will use how many electrons? Six electrons J0 is used to form the six bonds. So that's why right. one electron or one fluorine. And here, how many electrons it is using? Six electrons is using to form and six bonds to the six fluorine atoms. Clear? So these all are single bonds only. So that's we will call sigma bonds here. R will be called here bond base and this is one is like here. It is what is one bond base. So that's why. And here there are six bond pairs. And how many bond pairs are there? One, one bond pair. Clear? So that's why total how many? Seven. If seven is there, actually we have to get pentagonal bipyramidal. If seven zero is there, and we will consider that one is pentagonal bipyramidal. But six bond pairs and one bond pair is there. It is there in the first year chemical bonding, and you see there one table is there in the one. So in the table, uh, if bond pairs are these many and bond pairs of those many, and then what is the structure? They have given very clear. You have to and read the table. Clear? So that's why six plus one. So that's why it is distorted of the hydral. When six bond pairs and one bond pair is there, always the structure what it is known here distorted of the hydral. So that's why the part is two. Option one is the next one. Coming to the part three. <coughs> clear? So now they are asking here select the correct matching. One side they have given here. As they means uh, you know list one and list two. You have to match. Clear? Man? See first one. What is the first one here? X E F four. X E F four. Clear? Man? So X E F four means how many chloride are there? I will write here. You see. Xenon. Xenon means we have to take. Clear? Man? So Xenon. Xenon means how many atoms you have to take here? So take the Xenon of eight. Eight electrons you have to take. Take the eight electrons. And how many fluorine atoms are there? Fluor, fluorine atoms, xenon should form how many bonds? Yeah, four bonds. So that's why four electrons will be used. And remaining four electrons are one bond pair and one bond pair. So how many bond pairs here? There will be four bond pairs and two lone pairs. When I have four bond pairs and two lone pairs, then what about the shape of the molecule? The molecule shape is square pyramid. What is the shape of yeah? Square pyramidal. We have already discussed. So, XEF4 is a square pyramidal. Or you can say square pyramidal from square pyramidal. Square plan. Square Square plan. This is the structure. Next one, what we have to have? XEF6, just now only we have discussed it here. What is the XEF6 structure here? Distorted of the handle. Distorted of the 
distort the octahedron. Okay, no? Next one. Next one, what it is? XeO3. XeO3 means you already know. What is XeO3? And you know how many oxygens are there? There are three oxygens. Each oxygen gives how many electrons? Two electrons because oxygen will form one sigma bond and one pi bond. One, two, three, four. Clear one? So this is sigma and pi, sigma and pi, sigma and pi. This is one, one pair. So that's why how many bond pairs are there here? Bond pairs one, two, three. Only sigma bonds only we will consider bond pairs. And one lone pair. And three bond pairs and one lone pair. What is the shape? Pyramidal shape. What is the shape here? Pyramidal. And H3 also we have discussed in the same way. Next one is Xe. Whoa. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Xe. Whoa. Yeah. How many bond pairs and how many lone pairs you see? So if you use this is. Clear? So xenon is there. How many electrons you have to write? Right, eight electrons because it belongs to eight to one oxygen is how many electrons to make a bond with the xenon? Two electrons to form one sigma bond and one and pi bond. So next one is fluorine. Fluorine needs one one electron only because xenon gives one electron to fluorine. Fluorine gives one electron and make a bond. So single bonds. Yeah. So that's why how many bond pairs are there? Sigma bond, sigma bond, sigma bond. Three bond pairs. Here, here how many lone pairs are there? Two. Three bond pairs and two lone pairs. What is the shape? T shape here. Clear? A trigonal bipyramidal shape. Are can also be considered as a T shape. So what is your answer now here? Option one is the correct one. Clear? So next one. Part D four. Questions if they give like that, you have to do. Clear? Which of the following is not correct? XeO3 has four sigma bonds and four pi bonds. XeO3 what is the structure of XeO3? Pyramidal and double bond O. And here there will be a double bond O and double bond O. Three bond pairs and how many bond pairs are there? One bond pair is there here. Clear? So how many bonds and many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds? Three sigma bonds and three pi bonds. But in the answer, what they have given? Four sigma bonds and four pi bonds. That should be the wrong answer. Clear one? Next one. Question number 45 means part 4, option 4 is the correct one. And next one, part D5. Clear one? The xenon compound that are isostructural with IPR2 and BRO3 minus respectively R. Clear one? See now, in the case, same structure means same structure means what? We should have the same bond pairs and same number of lone pairs. Then it will have the same type of structure. IBR2. Clear one? IBR2 minus. How many bond pairs are there? How many lone pairs are there? Just to check it here. Iodine belongs to which group? Man? Seventh group. Seventh group means how many electrons I have to write here? I have to write here. Seven electrons. But here negative charge is there. Negative charge means one electron will be added. So eight electrons will write. How many group? Iodine is one group. How many bonds here? Two bonds. One bond with the one group and means two electrons will be used here. So how many, you know, lone pairs are there? Two bond pairs. IBR will have two bond pairs plus three lone pairs. I mentioned here, whenever bond pairs and lone pairs are greater than bond pair, then the shape of the molecule is linear. What is the shape of the molecule? This is linear. Next one. BRO3 minus. Next one is BRO3 minus. Clear? So in this one, bromine again belongs to which group? Seventh group. We have to how many electrons? Seven electrons, one negative charge. So that's why. Clear? Man? So you have here one electron here. Next, oxygen. Oxygen bonds how many bonds? Two bonds. One is sigma bond and another one is pi bond. Which is the which one? Bromine. So that's why bromine we use how many electrons to make a bond with the oxygen? Two electrons. One electron for the sigma bond and another one electron for the pi bond. So bromine use. Clear one here? Six electrons to make a pi bonds and sigma bonds with the one is sigma and another one is pi. Sigma, pi and sigma, pi. And how many bond bond pairs are there? One bond pair. How many bond pairs are there? Three bond pairs. We are going to be have three bond pairs and one bond pair. Clear? Next one. In this one, they have mentioned here uh, which one IBR2 and PRO3 respectively, isostructural with respectively. XEF2, you see? What is the XEF2 one? I will write here. 
one is not question number four. Next one, question number five. So which of the following does not react with AgCl? Clear? No? So whenever AgCl react with some compounds, you know first one and Na2. I already mentioned this is very important question. Na2, S2, O3 plus AgCl. Photographic plate we will use. This is what we will call hypo. What is the exact formula of hypo? Na2, S2, O3, 5 H2O. When it is treated with silver chloride and silver chromate, you know on the photographic plate and the silver chloride and silver chromate coating will be there and after taking the photo you have to remove that silver chloride and silver chromate layer by dipping the film into the hypo solution clear no? so that's why when it react then take the two moles here very important this is Na3 you will get Az S2O3 taken two times and this is the compound you will get clear no? so next you, you will get the compound plus what two moles of you have to take here four and you know here you see NaCl is there and you will get the NaCl clear my so this is about the reaction means NaCl will react with what it is NaCl to O3 and also I already mentioned NaCl and react with the ammonium hydroxide and there we have discussed NaCl plus when we act with the ammonium hydroxide, it will form a complex as which complex you will get one? AZ, NH3, 2 times, and Cl, that's what it is one, H2O, this is a complex. It is a white precipitate, it is what it is one? It is white precipitate, when you dissolve into the sodium hydroxide, that white precipitate will be disappear because of formation of complex compound. Next one is, with the ammonia, AZ, Cl will form the complex with the ammonia molecule clear no? so you have to take care also two moles clear so what do we get az nh3 taken two times and we have what is it? cl so but azcl will not form any complex with the na clear no? so your option should be what it is what here option c is the and the next one coming to the question number six See the question number 6, what it is, which of the following is incorrect, which of the following is what it is not incorrect. See what is the first one, O2 is a, a weaker oxidant than the O3, I already mentioned very clearly in my work and we discussed about the PE class, clear one. So O3 is a strong oxidizing agent compared to the O2. Clear not? So, you know, O3 is a very powerful oxidizing agent. Next only to which one? Fluorine. After fluorine, powerful oxidizing agent is ozone. Clear not? It is most powerful than oxygen. Clear not? So, first one is correct only. O2 has small bond length than O3. It is also correct because you know O2 and we have what it is one? O3. This is O3. Clear not? Here, which one here? This is a double bond. The double bond is there between the oxygen and the oxygen. But here you see which one? And you know it involved in the resonance. When it involved in the resonance, you know, and these bond lengths are same. And you know this is not a single bond. It is actually it is not a single bond. It is not a double bond. These bonds are in between single bond and double bond. Clear? So that's why. If single bond is there, so they will have the, you know, uh, bond length will be long compared to the double bond. In between means, and this bond will be longer than what it is one, double bond. Clear? You see, double bond is there one here. This is bond length. Suppose if I take carbon, carbon, double bond, carbon, carbon, single bond. So how much one here? It is almost 154 picometer. Clear? And here if you take, this is C double bond C, it is almost 140. If it is in between, in between means it is not a double bond, exactly not a double bond, exactly not a single bond. Means it is in between, between means what it is one. It is suppose just to assume here, uh, one, uh, you can say in the between, in the between means I can take uh, one uh, 40, 5 like this. You can take in between. Clear? So that's why if it is not a double bond, not a single bond, it will have longer bond length than the one it is not. Double bond. That is only I mentioned. 
Okay, so that is second one also correct. And both O2 and O3 are paramagnetic. No, O2 is a paramagnetic and O3 is a diamagnetic. That is in correct. Clear one? O3 is a angular shape. I already mentioned it is a bit shape one. Angular shape. Your option, option 3 is incorrect. Option 3 is incorrect. So that is what? Next one. Seven point. So which of the following react with concentrate HBSO4? Clear one? So three metals they have given. One is gold, another one is silver, third one is platinum. So which one of the following react with concentrate HBSO4? You know gold and platinum are noble metals. Noble metals will not react with the what it is one concentrate HBSO4. It will only dissolve in aqueousia. So that's why first first and third will not react with HBSO4, but silver. It is not a noble metal. It will react. Clear one? So that is. So eight question. <coughs> question number eight. So let's see who is question number seven. What is the answer over here? Option two. So eight. HCOOH reacts with concentrated HCSO4. Reacts with what is over here? Concentrated HCSO4 to produce. You know HCOOH concentrated HCSO4. You all know. Concentrate is same question we have discussed in the previous part. COOH is a you know uh, acid and concentrated HBSO4 is a powerful dehydrating agent. Dehydrating agent means what it will do? It removes the water molecule. One OH and H will be removed. Then what will be left here? Yeah, CO. That is only CO plus what it is not H2O. It gives what it is not here carbon monoxide. So option one is the correct one. Clear one? Next one. Ninth one. Ninth one. So on heating is potassium chlorate. I already mentioned the first one is preparation of oxygen. You see, in that one we have prepared oxygen by using the KClO3 in presence of manganese oxide and heat. It is a catalyst. Then what you will get from here? Take the two moles here. At first you write KCl plus oxygen. So then, balance here, take two moles, then what do we get? Man? Two moles and here three moles. It is one of the very important preparation for what it is man here? Oxygen. Take the potassium chloride and treat this one heated in the presence of manganese dioxide and you will get what it is man? Oxygen. Oxygen will be liberated. So your option should be option two is the correct one. Next one. Which of the which of which is the best oxidizing agent among the following? Clear one. So next one comes to question. Which is the best oxidizing agent among the oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium? Clear one. So which one is the best oxidizing agent? You know, the best oxidizing agent is oxygen. Clear one. Oxidizing agent. What it will do? Oxidizing agent. It oxidizes other substance itself. It undergo reduction. Reduction means what is one gaining of electron, which gains electrons very easily. That undergo reduction very fast. That one act as a oxidizing agent. Clear one? So oxygen being a more electron negative, it gains the electrons very fast. It undergo reduction very easily. Undergo reduction easily means it act as a powerful oxidizing agent. So that's why. Oxygen is the powerful oxidizing agent. Clear one? Next one. So option one is one here. Option two is correct. Level two. Question number eleven. Oxygen molecule is a diamagnetic. Oxygen molecule is a which one? Paramagnetic. Why? There are two unpaired electrons in the you know its pi or pi star orbital and the bonding. If you write here oxygen. In the first year chemical bonding we have studied. Oxygen total valence, how many electrons will be there for valence electrons? Oxygen 8, 8 means total how many? Not valence electron, total number of electrons here. 16. Oxygen atomic number 8, so it will have 8 electrons and 2 organs are there. 16. So what we will write here? Sigma 1s2 and sigma star 1s2 and sigma 2s2 and sigma star 2s2 and sigma 2pz2 and the next one is 5 2px is equal to 5 2py. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 means 5 to 10. 10 means here 11, 12, and 13, 14. 
clever next example will come pi star 2px is equal to pi star 2py and last one here sigma star 2p is equal to clever so up to here how many atoms we have filled here 14 1 2 3 4 5 5 2 is a 10 10 plus 4 14 15 16 because these are degenerated atoms degenerated atom means first we have to fill one one atom then pick Clear? So in the anti-bonding alcohol, these are anti-bonding alcohol and stars are anti-bonding and remaining are bonding alcohol. In the anti-bonding alcohol, for the oxygen, unpaid electrons are there or not? Yes, unpaid electrons are there. So that's why it is a which one? It is a paramagnetic. So that's why paramagnetic uh, with two unpaid electrons. Paramagnetic with how many unpaid electrons? Two unpaid electrons. So this is what is my option? 3 is the correct one. Next one. Question number 12. Atomicity of the sulfur. I already mentioned there previous. What is the sulfur atomic atom, atomicity one? Next one. Which of the following have been arranged in decreasing order of oxidation? Oxidation number of sulfur. Oxidation number of sulfur. Clear? We have to calculate the oxidation number. So you can easily do this. So previous we have already done. Uh, directly I will go. Uh, see the option four. What it is there? Remaining you can easily. Option four I will do. Means remaining you can easily calculate. What is this one? H two S O five. Clear H two S O five. Clear So what is the? You know that whenever any group is there, what is the highest oxidation number? Means. Highest oxidation number is equal to its group number. Clear? Ma? Suppose sulfur is there. Sulfur means exception is there for the first elements of the each group. Remaining all will show the highest oxidation state is equal to its group number. Suppose sulfur is there. Highest oxidation state what it is? Plus 6. If beyond that, you cannot show the oxidation state. Plus 7 it cannot show. Clear? Chlorine is there. What is the chlorine belong to its group? 7 group. What is the highest oxidation state for the chlorine? 7 only. Clear? So calculate here. So whenever you calculate, you know, uh, you don't know what is the oxidation state of uh, sulfur, that will be X. And here, plus 1 and oxygen is minus 2. So 2 into plus 1, plus 1 into X, plus 5 into minus 2, it is a total of 2, 0. So that's why 2 plus X minus 10 is equal to 0. So X minus 8 is equal to 0. So X is equal to 1 is 1, 8. What is you are getting here? Sulfur oxidation state, how much you are getting? Man? 8. But it is wrong. Clear one? Whenever sulfur belongs to which group? Sixth group. Sixth group means what should be the highest oxidation state? Plus 6. Clear one? So beyond that it cannot show. Means it is showing here what is the oxidation state? Plus 8. Plus 8 means it is a absolutely wrong. Means if, if it is getting plus 8 means there is a, you know, whenever uh, any element showing uh, oxidation state higher than its highest oxidation state, then definitely in that compound there is a peroxy bond. Clear one here? So that's why write the structure here, chorus acid. Have you remember we have discussed here? Chorus acid, this is. What is the chorus acid formula? Yes, carbon bond O and here OH and O and this is OH. This is the chorus acid. This is usually peroxy bond is there. O O bond we will consider as a peroxy bond. Then we write minus two, minus two, minus one. Peroxy means what it is one? Minus one. Clear? But here we have taken from these two oxygens we have taken. Here what is one? Totally minus two only we have taken. So also it will show the two more oxidation state. Six instead of six it will show the eight. Clear? Man? So that's why here what is minus two, minus one, minus three. Minus 3 minus 2 minus 5 plus 5 means it is a plus 6. That is clear. So that is plus 6. In the next one, H2SO3. H2SO3. H2SO3 means what is This is a plus 1. This is minus 2. This is a plus 2. And this is a minus 6. Minus 4. Minus 4 means what is it? Plus 4. Clear? Next one is a SCL2. SCL2 means what it is it is a minus 1, total minus 2, means it is a plus 2. Next one is H2X, it is a plus 1 hydrogen, it is plus 2 means it is a minus 2. 
in the first one plus 6 next one plus 4 next one plus 2 last one is minus 2 this is decreasing at our oxidation state so this is option 4 is the so 14th question the formula of hypo i already mentioned what is the hypo formula Na2 S2O3 and how many water molecule will be there 5 H2O this is hypo Okay, ma. So next one, which is monoatomic? Which is monoatomic? Ma? Noble gases are monoatomic. So helium is the sulfur, phosphorus, chlorine, and helium. Which is monoatomic? Helium is the monoatomic. Next one, sixteenth one, which is not correct statement. Yes, a ring is not a planar. It is not a planar. I already mentioned it is a puckered structure. Here, so some of uh, sulfur atoms are on the plane and some of sulfur atoms are above the plane and below the plane. So this is structure we have mentioned you see. So this is here, this is the structure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pucker structure. Here, a crown type structure. Here. So it is not a plan. It is called not correct there also. Oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. You know that oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. SF4 exists, but OF4 does not exist. That is also you already know. Oxygen can form maximum how many bonds? Two bonds only. But here oxygen is forming how many bonds with the fluorine and four bonds. So it is impossible. That is also correct. SO3 and SO3 2 minus have trigonal planar geometry both are having same geometry they are saying same geometry means it should have the same number of bond pairs and lone pairs check it here SO3 which question one here question number uh, 16 SO3 means same structure means they should have the same number of bond pairs and same number of lone pairs then only they will have the same geometry clear one so SO3 sulfur belongs to this group 6 group how many electrons you have right 6 electrons Oxygen needs two electrons always. Two electrons. One electron is used to form sigma bond and another one is for the pi bond. But never consider pi bonds. So how many sigma bonds only we will consider? How many sigma bonds are there? Three. Means those groups we will consider as a bond pair. Is there any lone pair left here? No. Zero lone pair. So three bond pairs and zero lone pair. Square planar structure. Clear? So same they are asking SO3 2 minus also we have the same structures they are saying SO3 2 minus. Sulfur belongs to which group? 6 group, right? 6 electron. But 2 electron minus minus means what is not? Gain of electron. 2 electrons gain. So you have to write. 1 minus is there, 1 electron you have to add. 2 minus is there. How many electrons you have to add? 2 electrons. Actually 6 and 2 minus is 2 electrons you have. Each oxygen needs how many electrons here? Each oxygen needs two electrons, one is sigma, another one is pi, sigma and pi, sigma and pi. It is left, it is one bond pair. So how many bond pairs are there? One bond, three bond pairs. Three sigma bonds means three bond pairs. One lone pair. It is having three bond pairs, one lone pair. But it is having three bond pairs, zero lone pair here, here one lone pair. This structure and this structure should be different, not the same. It is a you know and planar structure, trigonal planar, and it is a three bond pairs and one bond pair. What is the structure? What is the shape of the molecule? Pyramidal. So both are different shapes, are different geometries. You can say, and fourteenth one is the not correct. Fourth one is the not correct statement. So and option four is the uh, I mean answer for this. Yes. Okay. Next one. <coughs> Seventeen question. Ozone layer, uh, ozone layer forms naturally by ozone layer is forms naturally. I already mentioned ozone how it will be formed. So oxygen in the upper layer and treated with the UV radiation and will be converted into one is no? ozone. So in the ozone preparation, first I have given this one only. So this is option. What is no? option two is the correct one. Bleaching powder I already discussed in the previous class only. So 19th one, question number 19. Which of the following halogen has highest bond energy? Highest bond energy. What they have given one here? This is also we have discussed fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Which is having the highest 
bond energy you know that actually fluorine and fluorine atoms are you know compared to remaining fluorine and fluorine is a small in size so that's why this bond should be very strong but because of this small size these two atoms bond length is very short bond length short means they are coming very close to each other and you know and here there are three lone pairs with the halogen atoms so that's why when it is a small atoms then bond is short when bond is short this two fluorine atoms come very close when they come very close and they experience here and the repulsions strong repulsions here so that's why we avoid this repulsion and these fluorine atoms will move away from each other they move away from what is my here each other so that's why bond length is actually it should have this bond should be the strong bond it should have fluorine should have a strong bond but due to and their strong repulsions mean between the maximum repulsions between the lone pairs and it won't it will not have the highest bond energy which one will have chlorine will have the highest bond energy that is clear ma so chlorine is the answer what is the other actually i have also i mentioned chlorine first one is next one is bromine next comes chlorine and last one is iodine this is bond dissociation enthalpy in the field was we have discussed clear ma the same question they have asked me next one euchlorine is a mixture of what is known here euchlorine is a mixture of it is a mixture of chlorine and chlorine dioxide it is a mixture of what is known here chlorine and chlorine how it will be prepared means by using kcl o3 kcl o3 and a treat with the hcl you will get kcl plus cl o2 plus cl2 plus what you get on it So this mixture will be called as a euchlorine. Clear ma? So next one. Next one is electron affinity. What is the electron affinity atom? Next question. Question number twenty one. Electron affinity. Which one will have the electron gain and enthalpy or electron affinity? Which one will have the highest electron affinity? Chlorine or fluorine? Chlorine will have highest electron affinity compared to what is known fluorine. What is the R here? Electron affinity R chlorine. And the fluorine, bromine, and iodine. This is electron affinity R. Clear, my dear? So that's why uh, now they have given here fluorine. They have not given increasing R, increasing electron affinity. Fluorine they have not given increasing electron affinity. Let's what you have to write down. Iodine, bromine, and fluorine. This is increasing electron affinity. Clear? Next one. Which of which has the highest molar of evaporation? Evaporation. Clear? Okay, Means they are given. Give, uh, they have given the question number twenty two. They have given H F, H C L, H B R, and what is known here H F. Okay. So they are asking highest the heat of evaporation. Means to vaporize. To which compound to vaporize? To which compound we have to supply more heat of heat? We have to supply for the evaporation. That they are asking. Clear? No? You know that. And vaporization, vaporization, and boiling point are in our same proportion. If any calm liquid having low boiling point, then it will be easily evaporated. Isn't it, ma? Petrol is there. Petrol boiling point how much, ma? Very low. So that's why at room temperature you open the and you know lid of the bottle, then automatically you can see the vapors. So it will have the low boiling point, so highest evaporation. Means we not we need not supply temperature there. Easily evaporate. So low boiling point, high evaporation. Clear? So that's why in this case, if check it here, which one will have boiling point? Are you calculate? You will calculate. Okay, no? So which one is the highest boiling point? Actually, boiling point or melting point increases with the size. As the size increases, when our forces increases, then automatically melting and boiling points increases. But you know, it's a it will form the. Actually, this should be the R. Okay, no? But you know, it's a will form the. It is it's a remaining molar. You know, they are it means it's a is in form of liquid. Remaining molar gases. Why? Because the HF can form the hydrogen bonds. Clear? Because this is like the HF 
and next one if I write here, it's a, that one will be there, that is it, hydrogen bonds here, and our hydrogen bond is there, and this is here, there is only van der forces, but van der forces means, and in this one, as the size increases, van der Waals forces increases, but here what it is not, hydrogen bonding which is stronger than, you know, van der Waals forces, so that's why, and here, it's a big so, which one will have the highest boiling point? And here it will have the highest boiling point. So, to vaporize that liquid, you have to supply a lot of heat energy. So, that's why it will have the, you know, highest heat of vaporization. Clear? It won't be evaporate easily. It, it will be evaporate very easily, HCl gas. It easily evaporate. But HF, due to the hydrogen bonding, it won't, it, 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 it will not easily evaporate. So that's why you have to supply a lot of heat energy first to break the hydrogen bonds and after then it will evaporate. So that's why, and HF needs a lot of, you know, highest molar heat of heat of vaporization. You know? And so, after 22, option 1 is the 23. When iodine is dissolved in CCL4, the color that results in, result is color of iodine what is it? Violet color. Colors are I said very important. Chlorine is uh, fluorine. Fluorine is what is it? Pale yellow. Chlorine is greenish yellow. Bromine is reddish. Uh, you know, uh, brownish red, reddish brown. And the next one, violet. Uh, iodine is a violet. Clear? So option two is the color. So hydrogen bond does not play any role in boiling point of clear one? So hydrogen bond will not play any you know role in boiling point. NH3, you know, there will be hydrogen bond H2O, there will be hydrogen bond alcohol, there will be a hydrogen bond in HI. Is there a hydrogen bond here in HI? No. So it will not play any role. 25. So 24 option 3 is the clear one. Next one is 20. Which one is a pseudo halide? I already mentioned in the last class what are the pseudo halides. Pseudo halides consisting of two or more than two electronegative atom of which one is the nitrogen. Clear? So which one is the which uh, uh, halide is means uh, anion is having the nitrogen here? The first one. So first one will be the option. Next one. Which one is the anhydride of HClO4? Clear? HCl4 anhydride. What is the anhydride of HCl4 there? Anhydride means I already mentioned. What do you have to do? My anhydride means you have to remove the which one? Water molecule. Remove water molecule. And if you to remove the water molecule, how many hydrogens you will require? Two hydrogens. Remove water molecule here, these two. Then you see hydrogen we have removed. And here which one is left? Chlorine is left. How many chlorines? Two chlorines are left here, Cr2. O8. O8 means one oxygen will be here removed. So O7. Cl2O7 is the, you know, anhydride of, means uh, Cl, Cl4 is an anhydride of, what is known here? It's Cl4. Okay, no? So your option is option 4 is the, so which is the most volatile compound? That's the only we have discussed here. Which one is the most volatile one here? So it, you see here, in this case, HF is in, among the HF molecule, which, which bond will be existed? Hydrogen bonding will exist. Hydrogen bond existed means it won't easily evaporate, so that's why it is in form of which one? Liquid, so it won't be easily evaporated. But remaining three are which one? Gases. HCl is a gas, HBr is gas, and HI is also gas. But you know, among these three, HCl, HBr, and what it is now? Hey, among these three, which one easily evaporate? That we have to identify. You know, as the size increases, as the size increases, when you are moving from the chlorine to iodine, size increases. When size increases, when our forces of attractions increases, what we want? So that's why in the iodine, HI molecule, attractions, one of the force of attractions among the HI molecule will be strong. If attractions are strong, will it easily evaporate? It won't easily evaporate. Where the attractions are less? Here, because we have small inside. So that's why in this one, 
we very weak Vanover forces of attractions are existed among the HCl molecule, so that's why weak Vanover forces are there. They can easily evaporate. So that's why which one should be the answer? HCl should be the answer for this question. So what is the question here? Question number 27. Option 2 is the correct one. Which of the following? Which of the following? Uh, is used as an antiseptic. You already know iodine is used as a antiseptic in form of what is what tincture. Clear? So whenever we we hurt or we got hurt uh, by any wound, then what do we do? We will keep the iodine there. So what is the, what is meaning of that? So it is used as a test. Tincture is used as a iodine solution. That is, it used as a what is what antiseptic. Next one. Question number 29. HI cannot be prepared by action of H2SO4 on Ki because you know that here. HI, this is question number how much one? 29. Whenever HI is treated with H2SO4, H2SO4, clear my here. Then, sorry, HI, sorry, not the HI, Ki. Ki when treated with HSO4, what will what you will get from here? You will get the Hi. What you will get from here? Hi plus what you will get from KHSO4. This is the answer actually. Yeah? Otherwise, directly take two moles here. No problem. Two moles of this and K2SO4. This is the reaction. So HI is prepared by using HTS4, but we cannot prepare. Why? Why they are asking? Clear? You know that here what is prepared by here? HI is prepared. Clear? And you know that HI H2SO4 is a oxidizing agent. When it is oxidizing agent, then what it will do? Man? It oxidizes HI into what it is man? iodine. It's a one is iodine. So it's a will be formed, but after that it will be because HSO4 is a oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agents they oxidize the uh, halogen acids to halogens. So that's why it's a will be oxidized to what it is iodine. So that's why by using this reaction we cannot prepare the HSO. That is means why because means HSO4 is a oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the product formed in this reaction that is HI into iodine. Clear That is next one. 31. 31 is bromine is obtained on the commercial scale from what it is Mahia? Cornelite. Actually, you know, after the extraction of the chlorine from the cornelite, and then we will extract the what it is Mahia? Bromine. Clear? So it will have some, uh, you know. Bromine compounds also. KCl and MgCl2 and 6H2 it will be there. In that compound contains, you know, some uh, you, you know bromine also MgPr2 that like that compounds will be there. And after removing of the chlorine and what it is there over here, we will pass actually chlorine through the you know uh, MgPr2. Then what will happen? Chlorine is more reactive than bromine. MgPr2 is there and chlorine replaces the bromine and you will get the what it is called bromine molecule. So carnalite is the answer. Next one, 31. Question number 31. So coming to the question number 31. Bromine can be liberated from the bro potassium bromide solution. Potassium bromide. This is potassium bromide. So treated with which one? Iodine solution of chlorine water. Chlorine water, sodium chloride, and potassium chloride, and leave this one to the chlorine. Then what will happen? Man? Then what will happen is chlorine and bromine. Which one is more reactive? What is the reactive order? Chlorine is more reactive than the chlorine, than bromine, and last one is what it is, man? iodine. So you know that, and more reactive one displaces the less reactive one from the solution. From there, what it is my here? Solution. So that's why, and here fluorine is a more reactive, so that's why, and it will convert the compound into 2 KCl plus what it is my? Fluorine. 
R also you know that chlorine water. Chlorine water is act as a what it is? Powerful oxidizing agent. It oxidizing agent because chlorine water Cl2 and H2. What it is? You will get two HCl plus one is nascent oxygen. So nascent oxygen means what is it? Oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the KBr into bromine. That is also you can see. So that's why you have to use the chlorine water to prepare the bromine. Clear? Yeah. Next one. Question number thirty-two. The correct order of bond dissociation energy of N two O two F two and Cl two. Clear? Yeah. So question number thirty-two. Bond dissociation energy N two. N two means which bond will be there? Man? Triple one. Oxygen means which bond will be there? Man? O two. And next one. Chlorine and chlorine which bond will be there? Single one. Which one will have the highest bond dissociation energy? Nitrogen. After that, oxygen. The amount of these two, just now only we have discussed in the previous. Chlorine and chlorine. Which one will have the highest uh, means the uh, uh, bond energy? Highest bond energy. Chlorine, not the fluorine. Even though the bond is strong, but in this case because of and this, the loan pair, loan pair, maximum loan pair, loan pair repulsions, and this. More two fluorine atoms move away from each other, automatically bond length increases. So that's why, and in this one bond rate dissociation energy for the chlorine is more compared to the one from fluorine. So what should be the order here? Nitrogen, fluorine is least. Chlorine, oxygen. Next one is what? Nitrogen. Then next one. Question number two. Answer what is the option here? Option two is the correct one. Clear one. Next one, thirty-three. Which of the following has greatest reducing power? Same question three level one also we have discussed. Reducing power means what is man? Act as a reducing agent. Clear? Right? Means it act as a reducing agent. Means it what it is? Reducing power means it re power of reducing other substances. That is what we will call reducing agent. Reducing agent reduces other substances by providing which one? Hydrogens. Which one gives the Hydrogen is easily to other substance that is a powerful reducing agent among HCl, HBr, and HI. Which one you know HCl, HBr, and HI? Which one can give the hydrogen very easily? HI because this bond length is longer, so it is weak bond easily breaks and provides the hydrogen to other substance easily. So it is a powerful reducing agent. Next one, thirty-four. Very four. Which one is the uh, bad conductor of electricity? Very much. So which one they have given? Which are means in the form of H two O two, H three O two, H three O two, H three O two, and H three O two. Means you know that to show the conductivity, a good to a uh, good conductor of electricity means the molecule should produce the ions. You know that in the solids. The electron in the metals, the electrons carries the electricity. Clear ma? But in the compound, ions carries the electricity. Clear ma? So the amount is which produces more number of ions, and that is the good conductor of electricity. Because you know that H I is there. In this one, H I bond is very 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 weak, so it dissociated into easily ions. So it produces more number of ions. It dissociates. If I take one gram of compound, immediately it would be dissociated and gives the H plus and I minus ions. More it can produce more number of H plus and I minus ions. So that's why here more number of ions means it is a good conductor of electricity. But coming to the H, you know that H half bond is very 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 strong. Clear me, Prakash? This is hydrogen and this is what fluorine. And overlapping one S R double here to be R double, almost size will be equal. Overlapping will be very 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 effective. So bond will be very strong. So it won't produce H plus means it won't produce ions easily. Won't produce ions easily means what is it? It is a bad conductor of electricity. So it is thirty fourth question. And next one is thirty five. 